Hey everybody, welcome to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and I need to ask you for a serious favor. If you are going to watch this video, whether you love snakes or hate snakes, I need you to keep an open mind. And if you're watching this video just because you get a thrill out of watching me get bit by a snake, I might want to have words with you about that. Okay, first thing is first. It is not cool to exploit wildlife by exciting people's fears of it just so that you can make a little bit of money. And for that reason, any money that this video makes is going to go to the conservation of reptiles in the wild. Humans as a species have been endowed with a tremendous influence on the condition of this planet. We tend to fear the things that we don't understand and then we tend to try to eradicate the things that we fear, things like snakes. But I do think that if we're intentional about it, we can also have a positive influence on the world around us. Here at Reach Out Reptiles, we make a lot of videos about what it's like living with snakes as pets. And I wanna always try to make a positive influence not only on your lives as potential reptile keepers or enthusiasts, but also on the lives of the animals themselves. Now within this video, there is a technique that I actually learned while handling reticulated pythons when I lived in Indonesia, which is where they're native to. It's a pretty important technique to understand if you are going to keep these animals. And that's not because snakes are always trying to bite you. This is actually a very unusual situation. I mean, in actuality, because pythons teeth aren't meant to kill their prey, that they do that by constriction, I'm a whole lot better off having been bitten by that pet than this one. Right, Pookie? And we do a lot of filming behind the scenes here. And this actually happened while an intern was filming me for training purposes. Now, I absolutely love my animals. And if you're having a hard time understanding how that could be, I'll just go ahead and leave you with this quote from a very wise young woman that I know. If you can only love things that love you back, you don't have a very loving heart. Here, come here, I might as well show you how to do this. Okay. Well guys, this is a pretty big oh. retic. Got a hold of me. <laughs> Let me show you just how to get off. This is a food strike. I was pulling her out, thought she figured it out. If they're not letting go on their own, chew on their tail like corn on a cob. Now the first thing you need to know is that snakes sleep almost all the time. And really when they are awake, they're either looking for food or they're being startled because they're about to become food from some kind of a predator. The fact that she bit me was my fault. Let me break it down to you this way. Imagine you're sleeping in your bed and suddenly at three o'clock in the morning, somebody whips the lights on, tears off all your sheets and screams, I think you just won the lottery or you owe a whole lot on your taxes. I think it's pretty easy to see how startled you would be. And then you don't even know if you're supposed to be excited and happy or afraid. So we as keepers need to be, make sure that we are very clear about our intentions by having a simple routine that we follow every time and the animal will learn to be able to predict what to do next. And that was where I went wrong. I deviated from the routine and I made a calculated risk to try and trust the animal to know, be able to read the situation, and I just guessed wrong this time. So the technique is this. I'm taking my teeth and chewing on its tail about as hard as you can bite your own finger uh, without causing any kind of real pain, but you're gonna chew on it, nibble on it almost like corn on the cob. The snake thinks, what the heck is that? They shudder and release. You saw in the video how she released immediately when I started chewing on her tail, and there was no struggle at all around the mouth or teeth that could hurt her teeth or her mouth or my arm whatsoever. This technique works really well. It's tried and tested. Well, now that I have your attention, I kind of wanted to take the opportunity to talk to you about why do people fear snakes? 
Now, if you're a Christian and you believe in the Genesis account of how the world was created and sin entered into the world with Adam and Eve right there in the garden being deceived by Satan who took on the body of the snake, you guys know this story, right? So if you believe in that and your fear of snakes comes from the fact that you believe that they bear in their physical modern bodies the reminder of man's original sin, then it would be very hypocritical for you to hate a snake for that. How can you hate something else for your shortcomings? So you might want to think about that. Or maybe you don't believe in God and you think the Bible story is a bunch of fairy tales and you fear snakes simply because you were raised in a world or a culture that fears snakes and you simply hadn't thought of it before. But now that I've brought it to your attention that you may be afraid of snakes culturally and not logically, I'm sure that you wouldn't want to continue living with a bias against something that a mistaken Christian culture taught you to hate without reason, would you? So you might want to think about that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to poke fun at either side. I'm just saying that sometimes we have an irrational fear of snakes that are really just a part of our environment. And yes, if you did find a wild snake living in its habitat outside your home and you tried to pick it up, it would probably bite you. But so would a wild raccoon, or an eagle, or turkey, or a chipmunk, or a turtle. Snakes are a critical part of the environment, whether it's the one you live in or the jungles of Indonesia where these ones come from. And even if you can't appreciate a snake just for what it is, I would hope that you could appreciate that there are people out there, like me, who absolutely love these animals. And if I'm honest with you, it took me months to decide whether or not I would even share this with you. I mean, that footage was filmed in summer. We're now in the dead of winter. And it's just because I'm afraid for the animals that I love. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that if people fail to understand the value that these animals have, then we as a human race might wipe them out forever. And that would be a huge loss to me. So I'd like to take the time to thank everybody that I reached out to to get advice on whether or not to put this video out, what the pros and cons would be, whether they were the reptile breeders, president of US Ark, or whoever. Thank you for helping me to make this decision. But most of all, I wanna thank you guys who watched this video to the end to listen to the entire message behind just the little video clip. And if this video is the first one you've ever seen from Reach Out Reptiles channel, please comment below and let me know your honest thoughts. But I'll let you know that I try to keep the comment section of this channel family friendly. So if you gotta get those choice words out there, rather than doing the fear mongering, stirring people up thing, all my contact information is right there in the description below fire away. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, entertaining, maybe it gave you a thing or two to think about, and hopefully this is one piece of advice from me that you will never have to use. You guys have a great weekend. We'll catch you next time.